All right, guys, when I do video demos here, you can interrupt me at any time. You can raise your hand. I'll pause the video, help you where you are. I use this free recorder. It's called Screencast-O-Matic. I've liked it for a long time. Even though Mac operating systems have their own screen recorders, PC systems have their own recorders, uh, this one abruptly ends at 15 minutes. <laughs> so I can't accidentally just record on and on and on. And that helps me in a lot of ways. So what I'm doing at the beginning of this video, which is our first one for this semester, is we see our Canvas page here. We got through our first day stuff, and that was actually unit module number one. And that was our introduction module, right? Each module will have these buttons at the top that will show you all the things you're doing. These are basically the different pages of the course. And then you just scroll down to the bottom, you click Next. And we went over these things last class, right? If you want to do the Mona Lisa painting thing, it's right in these slides. If you want to see our policy syllabus, and if you want to print our course outline, or at least download a PDF, this is what has all of our deadlines. So what are we working on today? It's August 30th. It's a pretty simple agenda today. Once we um, catch up with what we were doing last class, exercise zero especially, question of the day zero, we're going to learn to do an exercise of compositing where we're learning digital image mining, which means getting high quality resources from the internet and compositing them together. Think of it this way. If we were doing this by hand, we could go through everyone's office in the building, take stuff out of their trash can, and then make it into our own art. That's what we'll be learning today. The one thing we're not allowed to do in this first exercise is make our own trash. Right? So we're going to use only other people's pixels for this. We're not going to create any of our own line art. We're going to transform existing line art. The other thing I'm going to point out is this is the one day out of the entire class that you have required reading. Doesn't mean you have to get it done today. Doesn't mean you have to get it done, done before today. And it actually doesn't mean you have to get it done until next week. We have some time. Every other bit of reading is just supplemental material that might help you understand what we're doing, but it's not required. This is required at some point in the near future because this is a cited text that has legal definitions of things. And when it has to do with exactly what we're going to be going over today, which is digital image mining, searching and sampling, uh, using Google image search, being able to filter results, and knowing, especially, this is where the, the legal definitions come in, differences between public domain and Creative Commons licenses. Right? How to license your own work, what constitutes fair use, which we've talked about a little bit under educational and spontaneous fair use. And then you don't need to do the exercise because we're doing our own exercise, right? Now, most of you have not thought about Creative Commons designations of licensing. And if you have heard of Creative Commons, that's probably all you've heard about it. Oh, sometimes things are Creative Commons and not copyright. What's fascinating about Creative Commons and why it's made for the digital age is that you are able to give distinct designations to things. So the one that we're going to talk about the most is what's called Creative Commons Open. And Creative Commons Open isn't even listed here because Creative Commons Open has no limitations on it. It's basically the same as public domain. With the slight caveat that Creative Commons isn't necessarily always meant to be open-ended. So what does this mean? It means that you can license your work in ways that require it to be attributed to you or, and requires it not to be distorted or requires that it can't be profited from. Those are all under Creative Commons. So by reading this, you'll, you'll be ready for that discussion we have in class. And again, that's our, my only required reading of the semester, which means you're responsible for it. And it's not long. Okay, so course outline, very helpful. 
And then it will also show not just our deadlines, but kind of what we're hoping to do, right? So we want to start this and we want to be able to upload a finished exercise in the next class. Since our next Monday is September 4th and that's a holiday, our next class is September 6th. And that is when exercise one will be due. In Canvas, it's set to be due by 11.59 on the night of September 6th. But ideally, we will turn it in near the beginning of Wednesday's class. And just like we're doing today with exercise zero and question of the day two, we'll have to finish some stuff up probably in the first half of class to submit it. And we'll get faster and faster at that as we get used to it. Then what do we do during that class period? We introduce exercise two. And then when is that due? That's due the next Monday. On and on and on. So whenever you have questions about what we're doing, if you miss content, you know you're responsible for it. How do you make up for it? That's where the, the course outline comes in. Scroll down, go to next. Our custom raster portrait. Just like you each drew your portrait for your ID card, and if you need to grab your ID card, go ahead and do that because we're using it to form groups today. I give you some digital ways you could do that. And we have some great submissions. So we have some 8-bit ones. We have some AI-assisted ones. We have some interesting filtered ones. We have some uh, 19th century portraits. We have some anime ones. We have some disco ball ones. Okay, but notice, you'll see some of these pictures are huge, some are tiny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can edit your posts. And I'm going to edit all of these to be a way that's more critique friendly, even though we're not doing a formal critique of these. Uh, and then on the next one, I'm going to have you edit your own, right? So for Hyde, congratulations or kudos to Hyde for not leaving their name off, right? You're always asked to put your name and actually type it in at the top of your post. And that's because sometimes our name doesn't match what's registered. So that can get confusing. And we want to always be respectful of, of how you want to be called, how you are called. The only issue I have is though this might look great on Hyde's device, in the class, it's pretty big. So we're going to standardize it by once you put your name on, your name also helps us set scale. So you want your work to fit pretty nicely under your name. It doesn't need to fit perfectly under your name. Our names are different lengths. But I'd say we want it to be around, you know, 150 to 200 pixels. And that's going to be good for our critique purposes. So how can you edit your own? You just click on these three little dots. You only have access to editing your own posts. But as instructor, I have access to all of it. And you shrink it down. And then we want it underneath your name. So how do we get it there? Click on your image and then use your arrow key to select the space right before your image. And then I can hit return, and that will, you know, do a, a line break. And then you just hit done, right? And it's nice seeing uh, you guys comment on each other. That's what's great about doing these is discussions. Not only do you get to see what the class is turning in, you can definitely encourage them. And I think this is great. It's a little big, so I'll shrink it down. But that's the, when it becomes a problem is when they just blow up the screen. Right, and we can't see it all. I get it. And what's nice is these are what are called digital assets. So by my shrinking them there, it is in no way limiting the quality of that image asset. If you download that image, it's still just as big as when you uploaded it. This is just how it's viewed on this tool. And so if you're missing your name, go ahead and put that in. Now, like I said, I'll edit all of these, even though multiple people can edit at the same time. But I'm the only one as instructor that has access to editing your work other than you. So if you missed this, you're going to see it in your grades. It will show up as missing if you didn't submit anything by the deadline for it. The good news is, until we get to assignments, you can turn in work that you're missing and still get full credit. 
You can do that with exercises. You can do that with questions of the day. Then this is the other thing I wanted to show. If you access the, the course from your phone, sometimes you need to, right? You want to turn something in, though it's not the ideal way to navigate this course content. The phone won't let you post a picture. And it won't let you embed a picture. Posting is when the site itself or the display tool, in this case, Canvas LMS, uh, that's when you can upload the content of the image to that resource. It saves that content and then it shows it. So all of your pictures are saved in Canvas and that will last through the semester. That's posting. And then we can see it clearly. Attaching is what we see here where you use the paper clip and that works too. That also uploads it to the Canvas system. The problem is it doesn't make a visual of it. So what do I need to do to make a visual? I need to click on it, which will download it onto my computer. Then I'm going to save it, move it just so it's easy to find. That's a cool one. Onto the uh, desktop. And then I'm going to post it. So attaching you do with the uh, paper clip. But this is the preferred way so we can actually see your work. You're going to use the posting options. And to get the full posting options, you can click on the little three dots. And it's the one that looks like a landscape. And then you say upload image. And then you just drag and drop it and hit submit. Now, the reason they'll come in really large is this Wombo you know, AI site that I showed you. It actually gives you pretty high resolution images. It's actually higher than Dolly images. For a free site, it's pretty good. But what's going to come in is what's called the native resolution. So it's going to fill that canvas screen, no matter what it is. So I'm just going to shrink that down. And then if I want to move it under the name, I'm just going to click it. There's a few ways I could do this. And maybe the easiest way is to just copy the name, click this, use my arrow key to move before the image, paste the name, and then hit return. Lots of ways. And then say done. So attach something if you have no other option, but post it if you can. So we can see it right away. And you can do Canvas from your phone. You'll just have limited, some limited features. So same thing with this one. All I have to do to fix that is download it. This is another cool one. I, had, I did have one student last semester, and for some reason, their Canvas account, no matter what device they use to access it, would not let them post. All they could ever do was attach. And so I was willing to do this for everything they did, but man, that was a headache. So I'm hoping everyone can post. I've only ever seen that happen once, and I have no idea why. But it was really fun seeing your work and seeing all the variety. And really, you know, some of you worked on these in a hands-on way. But most of the work here was that kind of AI work of curating, right? Choosing what you thought was best. And that is still creative work. But it's not the kind we'll do on assignments. Now, until we get to the midterm of the class, we will critique through this Canvas discussion. So when you post an assignment, when we have you like represent your work and answer a question about it, this is how we're going to see it. So that's why I want you to all be able to control how it looks. And I'm not a format stickler. I just want the elements. So do I care if your name's above or below? No, I just want it to be there. All right. OK, this can happen sometimes too, and it's fine. So if you post something as a reply to someone else's post instead of as a reply to the assignment instructions, it will be linked to their post. 
It's not a big deal. 